Hello, Edless couples. How are you doing today? We welcome you today to Edless Discuss with Pastor Fred and Oluchi Chupono. Hello, Edless. It's our pleasure to welcome you once again in today's discuss. I believe God that you'll be blessed. Yeah, we believe that you shall be blessed. Today, we shall be talking about uh, personal hygiene. Hmm. Yes, you heard me well. Personal hygiene. Remember, we are, we are, we are eightless couples and we're looking at things that can actually enhance our romance. We believe that, that we are advancing in our marital age does not mean that we, our romance will be depreciating. No. Uh, but there are certain things that actually pour kind of cold water on the romance. And this one of them is, you know, when we don't take care of our personal hygiene. Now, you see, I know that sometimes as young people, before you get married, you see the, maybe the, 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 the partners, you know, trying to take care of themselves. But when they come together after a while, you find that as either one of the partners become complacent or even two of them. So what do you think actually that caused this complacency in the aspect of um, personal hygiene among couples? You know, the, the, the issue is just like you rightly said, initially it wasn't like that. They were very careful trying to impress one, uh, one another or each other. Uh, but, at, but, but, but as time goes on, you know, they became too familiar with themselves and uh, having things to do in common. And uh, and because they say that um, uh, love um, um, accommodates, yes, and, uh, a lot of things and, uh, and don't really uh, 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 find fault. Uh, so because of that love there, you tend to uh, uh, play down on some certain things. Okay, but that shouldn't be. You don't play down on the personal hygiene of your spouse. We, we 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 should be speaking out yeah all right in order to bring uh the highest quality we can because the, the when we go out there uh, we represent the entire family okay and when we talk about the personal hygiene we're talking about starting from ourselves you know the way the way our, our um you know the uh the, the um what do you call it again the relationship not relationship i'm talking about our, our our personal our routine the routine hygiene at home you wake up in the morning you brush your mouth you take a bath and the and the you, you dress up you know and off you go now there are some certain salient things among these that sometimes men in particular don't pay attention to and i want to talk about that briefly you know, men sometimes believe it's only women that should go there and take care of themselves and make up and rub this and do that, you know, but it's not again. They believe it, that it's women that owns the mirror. Yes, you know? they'll buy you a mirror there, keep buy it there with a chair and the table. and all that, so go there. and all that, they're okay. <laughs> <laughs> and they will say, well, they're looking beautiful, powerful. At the same time too, right, your wife will also want you to smell good. All right, you don't leave your armpit unshaved. Your beards must be shaved. You cut your hair, right? Dry clean your clothes. You know, when they come out with a ni nice deodorant, you smell good. She'll feel like hugging you of too. Of course, you smell good. You see, when you're not smelling good, you are indirectly scaring the partner. You know, do you understand that? Sometimes, you know, you, you, you don't even know how to express yourself or be able to communicate your disappointment, your disappointment to your <laughs> spouse so how can a, a spouse be able to relate to his partner or her partner look without actually offending the partner mm. or making your partner feel embarrassed yet being able to pass the message across that look you're not you're not taking care of your uh, hygiene and uh, I, I don't like it yes it's important and uh, and that goes down to the romance and the relationship if you have a very good relationship and you know that whatever thing, whatever uh, criticisms and uh, complaints I lay before us is for our own good, and uh, and I'm doing that in love, 
you will not pick offense. You know, when people begin to become very careful on how to talk to their spouse, there's a problem. There's a problem, yeah. Yes, we shouldn't be very careful. That's why, you know, the issue of communication is the, is the, is the bedrock of every marriage. Yes. Bedrock, because you must be able to learn how to communicate effectively with your spouse. Yes. Because the issue of telling your spouse, ah, you are, you, you, you are smelling, you have a bad breath, you know, such things, and they do happen. You yeah, understand? Yes, and, and, and we shouldn't take offense. And keeping quiet sometimes that will damage the whole. Uh, it's not a idea good idea. That, it's yes. not a good idea to keep quiet. You see, there must be a way I can communicate effectively with you without you being offended. I know you very well. I know the areas. I know the things that I might tell you, and you might not take it serious. I know the way I'm going to say that, and you'll be very serious with it. You know, I mean mm. it. Okay, and the and the and whatever it takes, whichever language, as long as it's not offensive, okay, as long as it's not an insult to your partner, communicate it in the best way your partner should understand about the personal hygiene. If there are things you notice, hey, go ahead and say that. You know, sometimes I remember one day, uh, uh, um, okay, somebody was just telling well, another. And the, and they were spouse, and they were telling the wife, the husband, I said, look, you, the hairs on your nose, they are portraying out, and the, you need to cut it, All right? You see, that, that, that's a good observation. It means to that, that you're a watchdog to your partner. We watch one another. You know that you wouldn't like such thing if you're talking with a man outside and you are seeing that from the nose, you, you feel somehow uncomfortable. So what do you do? First of all, you look at your own, just like Bible said that first of all, remove the log in your eyes before you're able to point to somebody else. So, so, so we should be able to uh, to look at uh, um, our spouse and be able to 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 correct or to pinpoint some certain things with love, and that will help us to move on. Mm, and again, too, so there are apart from your personal grooming, there are also like uh, habits that can actually irritate your partner. Mm. You know, and. Uh, once you're doing it you know sometimes we take a lot of things for granted because we have stayed together and uh, we feel he you know he should understand mm. but sometimes it actually makes the person feel irritated and you know kind of scare the person from coming closer to you yes and uh, indirectly dampening the romance and all things you know, can you remember some of the habits that yeah, yeah, yeah yes I, I also want to point out imagine in the night Rob just came back from the walk and after resting, after eating your um, dinner, and the and the your wife wanted you, the husband wanted you to come brush your mouth. And the guy said, "Why? Why? For it's not the same food we had. Why am I brushing my mouth?" Now, that, that, you see, we both don't have the same uh, 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 mouth order. There are people that have awful one, but even if you don't have, there's a need for you to brush your mouth in the night because you're not sleeping alone. You're sleeping with somebody that might not like what will be oozing out in the night. So that is one we must form the habit of brushing our mouth before we go to bed after eating food. Because you would that person can approach you. All right. So, uh, uh, and, the, and the other ones is taking care of our armpits. It's very important. Sometimes some of us don't repeat clothes. Our shirt, our dress, we repeat it. If somebody, in our wear, we said it's not only just once. Yes, yeah, only just once, but 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 just because that has been on your body means that you yes, would have right. yes, no matter how small, with time it will. Some will wear clothes and they, they will leave it and repeat the same clothes next time. And when somebody complains, Peter is smelling you, you feel offended. You shouldn't. All right, even your your inner wears, you don't repeat them. You shouldn't repeat them. This this kind of thing, you will be doing it when you are a bachelor. Do you get it? When you are a bachelor, you don't care. You wake up in the morning, you just you know, do whatever and out you go. But now somebody's watching you. You say you shouldn't be doing that. And and uh, and that person wanted to grow up. So what do you do? You you stick to those things and grow up. Yeah. Um you see the Bible says in Romans twelve one, it says, Present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God. So to our partners too, they need to see us holy, clean. Neat, completely clean you know looking sweet and smelling good is very inviting is very attractive so we leave you here for tonight we want you to know that personal hygiene we shouldn't joke with it a lot of uh, romance have been killed have become cold 
because of, of, of our complacency in taking care of ourselves. For you to remain ageless, you have to take care both your inside, outside, your environment, and the kind of habits that you do. All right. Thank you, uh, Ageless, for watching. We, we, I believe you have learned one thing or the other that will help you romance and your personal hygiene. Don't forget to follow us uh, on our Instagram and uh, on our Facebook page. Don't also forget to subscribe our, uh, on our YouTube channels. All right. And like our page. Until we see you again, God bless you. Bye.